All right, the last model we're going to look at the, that we'll try to solve cats versus dogs is a model called XClip. Now, XClip does what we call zero shot, which I mentioned in our lecture, but zero shot is the idea that it does not have to see or be trained on a pre existing data set of labels. Um, and the clip instead of XClip is actually the same clip model, um, if you've taken any of my previous classes or ever learned about uh, text to image generation. Uh, clip is a text to image, one half of text to, to image generation. Uh, it actually just takes in a phrase and then takes an image and scores how closely it is related to that. So for this tool, what we're going to do is we're going to feed it a video, and then we're going to say how close is it to these phrases or labels that we've made up. And then it will decide based on those couple labels um, what is it's closest to. So essentially it does give us a classifier that way. So um, for this model, we don't actually need to generate any frames. This operates on video. So we are going to start by just using our video data set that we've already created. Go ahead and connect to Google Drive. And then we'll go ahead and install some of the libraries required for this. And then we're going to go ahead and load our model in. And if I recall, this takes a little bit of time, so we'll see how long it takes, and I might stop the video and just wait for it to load fully. Some of these large language models are really, really large, like 10, 15 gigabytes of data, so it takes a while for them to download. Okay, this one's actually looking a little fast, so I think we'll be fine to just let it wait. Once that's loaded, we're going to load in a couple functions that will help us uh, do some of our work and then also help us generate videos. And while we wait for this, let's go ahead and grab a video file. So we'll go ahead and go into Drive, My Drive, Algo Film. And since we're still working with Milo and Otis, go ahead and grab a clip. Now remember, this is video clips, not frames. So you want to go into your clips folder. Go ahead and grab one from sort of the middle. The other thing about this is, because we're loading in a video, um, I recommend the video be kind of small. Uh, this is a very large file to begin with, um, or like large resolution-wise. So I want to make sure that I have a smallish file. If you load something in that say like, you know, I don't know, 10 or 20 megabytes, it might actually crash your notebook. So keep it on the smaller side. Like I'm seeing here's one that's 1 1.2 megabytes. So let's try that. So copy that path in and we'll paste it here. And this also takes a little bit of time. Remember how I said the voices in this movie are crazy. Uh, this is actually a bad clip because we want to uh, figure out cats versus dogs. Um, so let me grab another one. Um, man, those voices are crazy. Uh, so again, the thing about this is uh, it actually has to convert it into a file format that can be viewed in this console, which is not uh, a video player. So um, it does a little bit of processing work. Let me find another file here that might be good. Let's try this one. Well, this won't be interesting because it's both a cat and a dog. So let's start with this and try it. Uh, the nice thing about this, the way this is set up, is we can try different videos and see how they go. So let's start with this one. And then we want to label, uh, we want to add some labels. So again, we kind of invent the labels on the fly here. So I could name this cats versus dogs. And let's just run this and see what we get out of it. And so in this video, it says this is more than likely a cat, right? Because that dog is actually kind of hard to tell that's a dog. Um, so it says it is a 94% a cat in this video, which I can't really disagree with because there is a cat in this video. Um, let's say uh, a dog 
and a cat laying together. Or let's say uh, a cat laying down. And let's add even a third label. So let's go roosters. Um, the cool thing about this is that you can provide the labels on the fly. You don't need to retrain it or look up what your uh, model supports or whatever. You can just add in layers and then, or add in labels and sort of see what it, what happens. And sure enough, it decided that a dog and a cat laying together is what is happening in this video, which is true. And it says it is about 76% confident that that's the right label. Pretty good. Um, so this model is kind of helpful in this regard. Now you do still need to provide pre-labels. And one of the challenges here is that going through your entire data set, you're gonna have to pick some labels that apply to all of your data set. Um, if you were gonna say, look for actors or actresses, you would have to label all of the cast. Also, I should mention like that doesn't really work because Clip doesn't necessarily know every single actor or actress's name and what their face looks like. It might know like really famous people, um, but it would, as you get less and less famous, like B movies or C movies or C list, D list celebrities, it's going to be really hard to figure that out. So you do have to provide some labels that uh, could could work with the rest of your data set. Because now we're going to apply this to the entire video. Um, let me just go ahead and find one more video here, and let's try this one and see what this looks like. And then we can apply some additional classification to this. But what I do really like about this model is that it doesn't require you to have pre-trained the model on certain labels. Um, using Clip, it's able to figure stuff out pretty well. Make my doggy day. All right, so here's an interesting one because there's clearly a cut in this film, but for whatever reason, it didn't catch the cut. So we could type in, let's do this, let's do hedgehog. Uh, we could do cat. And we could do dog. Let's run this and see what it finds. If I had to guess, it's gonna, f it might find the hedgehog, the dog. Okay, so it actually finds the dog, which one of the challenges with this tool is, let me see how many frames it takes in. It takes in 32 random frames from your uh, file. So this is six seconds long, it's probably 24 seconds a frame, or per second, 24 frames per second. Um, so that's probably like 120-ish frames. So it's going to randomly grab from any portion of the film and figure out from there what the, within that clip, what is happening. So if we run this again, it might grab a different section. It's still giving me dog. So uh, if I run this over and over again, I think it might eventually give me a hedgehog. Um, maybe it doesn't even know what a hedgehog is. You know, this is kind of the challenge with these tools. Um, like any prompt engineering, if you get a result that isn't match up exactly what you want, you might need to tweak your prompt a little bit. That's essentially what these are. Is these are prompts that uh, it then uses as labeling data sets. Okay, so with this in mind, I really just want to focus on cats versus dogs, right? That's what we've been doing for this entire video data set. So let's look at how this one performs versus another one. So one of the other things we need to do here is when we're saving this to our JSON files, we actually need to save it with sort of a custom key. So this next section here decide, this defines our, our key. Um, it's important to remember that you might not want to actually save this to your JSON data set. I don't think I have anything here that allows you to grab without that. Uh, I might add that back in at a later point. Um, but to save this to your JSON file, you do need to save it with a key. And this key should probably be custom to whatever you're doing. So in this case, it should probably be cat underscore dog, because that's the, the direction that I'm adding these. So it's cat dog. Um, this will also include a custom confidence score. So we'll create another key called xclip cat dog underscore confidence, and then it will process that. So just be aware that like, you could keep running this over and over again with different labels. Um, let's say you want to do one that's more like, I don't know, uh, a woodland scene with no animals in it, which actually might be a couple clips. And then the other one would be like uh, a cat, a dog, uh, a dog in a woodland scene, a cat in a woodland scene. You could also create like, a ton of different labels. Um, I don't know how well that works, to be honest, because it is trying to classify across all those. But you could create a bunch, and you could see what happens. Um, the other thing is you do need to label, add your labels here. Um, a challenge is that you can't really create a little GUI for labels um, because of the way this is structured. So you do have to go in and on line six, edit what your labels are. So in this case, uh, I want to do cat and dog. 
So now I have my key in here. I've got my labels here. I have my path to my JSON file, which is here. So I can copy this path. And then again, we're going to filter by only video clips that begin with Milo. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Now remember, because this is still binary classification, it is still being forced to apply a label to a video. Like I happen to know, I think the second one is like either uh, a title slide or production company images or whatever. So I know it's not really a dog. And sure enough, because it's nothing, it's neither a cat nor a dog, it kind of just says like, hey, uh, I don't really have any confidence in either of these scores. So I'm gonna say it's a dog, but I'm not very confident in that, right? There's only two labels. So it's basically saying it's a coin flip between those. Whereas, you know, you could look at three and see like, yeah, it's pretty confident it's a dog. Um, pretty confident a lot of these are dogs, although there are some that are still pretty light in terms of uh, confidence. Okay, so this is going to run for, again, I don't know, probably an hour and a half again. Um, if I really should start running these on V100 so it runs faster. Um, when this is finished, you can then go ahead and grab by your, um, your, your label. Uh, the other thing I realized here is this is not updated to work with this keys. Let me just grab these keys here. Uh, so the one thing to know is that um, you kind of have to run these in sequence. I could add another f uh, like option here to just pull from that key. In fact, that's probably what I will do. Um, so let me just go ahead and make this fix here real quick. So now we have that JSON key. So you might want to use the same one. You, I mean, you certainly do in this case want to use the same one you're using here. Uh, we can then also pick out our labels. And this is where it gets tricky. You have to kind of define here in the code what your labels are. Um, so line six, I'll add this note here for text that in line six, you need to actually label your label. Uh, that's kind of wordy, but um, <laughs> you have to add the correct labels in here because uh, this model doesn't know, or this JSON file doesn't know what your labels correctly are. So in this case, we can use cat or dog because that's what we have set up here. Um, if I were to change this to say looking for uh, woodland versus water um, or ocean or beach or something, then I would need to change both my JSON key and then also remember what my labels are down here and include them in the right way. So the way to do this is in this green part, you just add all the potential labels and then in here you, you grab what is actually the one you want. Um, at this point, we can now, when this is finished, we could run this, and this would go ahead and grab all the JSON uh, keys that we were looking for. So actually, we want to move this in here. Um, and what I'll also do is I'll add in the confidence score, so we can, we can track that as well. Um, so I probably won't run this cell, but I will run an example of it so we can see it on Vimeo later. Um, so again, this is, uh, you know, we're getting a little more complicated because you have to control and manage your own labels. Um, but it's helpful that you this is more flexible. There's a way more flexible system than one of these pre-trained machine learning models where you have to go in and uh, you know try and figure out, like, can I actually use this label? Um, I don't want toilet paper. How do I find a model that doesn't? We will, um, I think, either next or like in a couple of videos, we will cover how to actually train your own model that is a binary classifier. So if this still isn't working for you, like it's not finding the right answers, but you have a very clear idea of exactly what images and what labels you want to look for. Um, you can train your own model, and we'll look at that in just a second. So at this point, we are wrapped up on this section. Again, we'll do some custom training of these. Uh, but at this point, I think we should also move on to uh, looking at action classifications, which are kind of like this, but it, it's going to require some video. So we'll look at that in just a second. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for this video. Uh, hope you found this one fun. I would actually say, like, of all of them, if you're going to pick from any of these labeling systems, this is probably the one that is most flexible and easiest for people to use. It might always be accurate, but it's generally going to be good to try it out and see how it goes. Um, so try this one out for sure and maybe skip those other two if you're not looking specifically for cats or dogs. All right, see you in the next video.